Good? Hey, what's up guys? Good morning and welcome to the channel. It might not be morning where you're at, but for us, it's the start of our day. It's a gorgeous day here in Northern Illinois and we're gonna be building this porch on the back side of me, which is actually the front of the shed or hunting cabin, whatever you wanna call it. And I'm pretty excited because it's a sweet gable out the front. You can see the truss right here. That kind of gives you the view. But then it's gonna have a valley, a hip, and it's gonna wrap around into the garage. I've been waiting to do this. I've saved the best for last, so let's get right into it. I'm gonna cut a miter on this. Yeah. Or let's get clean cuts coming this way and we'll plumb it up. So we'll basically build around and then we'll plumb that corner up. We'll put this guy on. We'll set these up. We'll plumb that corner and we'll mark it right where I wanna cut it and then I'll cut it. Then I'll put this miter on, plumb it up, plumb it up, mark it, cut it, then we'll fit. Okay? So. Good. Go ahead. Let's get these guys stood up. Okay. Now, what we're gonna do here? You're gonna set it on that rail, and I'm gonna hold it. Can you reach out that far? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Or uh, I can just use the tire rail, and I can get it up. You think? Yeah. You ready? Got it. Oh, you kind of reach. It out as far as you can. Oh, yeah, dude. No problem. Okay. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just put a big GRK in that side because it, it'll go together, as you can tell. Can you rotate it this way? <coughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's gonna go together. I don't have to worry about that. Oh, dude, money. The motive. But I, I'm, I'm moving too much. I want to get this locked in. I'm going to get that guy locked in with a question is, will the triple hammer pull its weight? Always. Watch this. You ready? You ready for this? This is the new high output battery. And I've only got three bars, but... Pretty good. Uh, I think it's triple hammer. Okay. Pushed in. Oh, too much let out here. Oh, too much. Oh, no, too much. No, too much. <laughs> what is that? I don't know what easy, you want. Easy, easy. Okay. Right there. Hit that. Good. Yeah, hit it. Jeez. That bit sounds like garbage. I think this is one of the old ones. Do me a favor, throw that level on the side of that column right there. In and out? It's got to be going out there. It probably is. Right. That's much better. Yeah, that's going to be much level. better. Okay, yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. This, that sucker is like literally dead nuts. Straight across? Yeah. It's well, perfect. Should, it should be. Well, it should be, but you know how that goes. Oh, wait, wait, wait. So you need to be, that needs to be level. Otherwise, it's going to throw your measurement off. You level? Yeah. Your tape was kind of wonky, it's so like 3 8 one five three eight. Let's shove it in there. And then... I need quite a bit to get it in there at the same time. Oh, take it out, hit, push it out the way. Yeah, there you go. Keep going, get close to the edge. Ooh. There we go. Okay. Okay. 
let's just go ahead I can't and see. can you see that? Looks looks perfect, dude. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, get yourself a toenail, and then you can just go in the back. Yeah, might as well, dude. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. got those? Uh... No, there. I don't have them. I don't have. I got. I got a couple of these. No, no, no. Here, I think. No, I don't have them. I got a green. No, don't use the greens. There's not enough like meat on them, you know. Green? Don't don't go very far. Oh, you want to go further? I want the depth. Just use those other ones. Where are they at? What other ones? The golds. The big big ones? No, like those right there. These? Are those oh, pens? Yeah, yeah. These are the. Five. Those are the five and an eighth, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Use those guys. Toe nail it. Just toe nail it. Mama always told me. Stupid is stupid done. All of you, man. I hope someday we can be friends. Okay, measure them. About six and three quarters. About six and three quarters. Yep, the same. Okay. All right, here we go. Ready? Yeah. I'm I'm doing it all at the same time. One, two. Look at that. The Gen Three just beat our boy. But that's okay because here at our buildings, it's all about fairness. That was a lot of difference, huh? We'll have to do multiple, Greg, because there is differences in wood consistency. I think you started your right hand first. I don't think so. Yeah. All right, this is, uh, we're gonna try this again, mainly because I always think it's fair to get multiple chances in a fight, Greg. Um, all right, we'll go. Does it matter which one which is which? Uh, make sure, yeah, I don't think I so. Actually, last time I did this piece of wood with the triple hammer. Mm -hmm. So now I'll flip a flop them. That way yeah, if it's yeah. a hard piece of wood, at least we get some sort of a, okay, here we go. Yeah. One, two. I'm disappointed. I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. Yeah, I'm not mad because this guy's been really good. I'm this is a 36 volt, but I even took the high output battery off, put a standard 5.0, and that Gen 3, I'm gonna say, Greg, that I think that this strength of this is also its weakness. Sometimes it's almost too fast for applications yeah, that we it, do. Yeah, it depends on what you're... You know, and sometimes it will just spin out, but you cannot deny the fact that that just killed the triple hammer two times, so. Well done, Milwaukee, on the Gen 3 driver impact. Not to mention, it's pretty darn small. Was it have like four hammers in it? I must have five hammers. All right, guys, so we just did that test twice, and if you guys follow me over on Instagram, you would know why I did that with the Gen 3 Milwaukee, because I did a little IGTV video, and the triple hammer was not, I wasn't using it to showcase how amazing it is compared and how crappy that DeWalt 12 volt impact was that I was using the new extreme subcompact. Uh, I was just more or less showing that this is like my favorite drill and it, in my opinion, was the biggest, uh, the best at driving large lags. Well, everybody said there's no way that that's the fastest try the Gen 3 Milwaukee and I just did, and twice in a row now, even switching wood, uh, it clearly beat the triple hammer, and that's a full battery multi-volt, and that was a full battery on the 5.0, 18 volts. So 18 volt, 36 volt, this is a staple premium impact driver that we still love. I think it's just great control and everything, but the speed and power of the Milwaukee is pretty much, you can't argue it. Let's go. Oh, this is the big boy, Greg. You ready for it? Think I can one arm this one? I know you can one arm it. You're a freaking beast. Right here, find the balance point. Girl, let's go! Too big, too strong. Okay, now this is the inside miter I was worried about. This is the one that I think is gonna be the hardest to make. Good. Good. And I only say that, Greg, because 
we've got a lot of things that have to be perfectly square in order for this miter to work and stay straight with that miter out there. But, I guess, I think we're gonna be good. How's it look on the inside? Like, uh, tight. Like tight? Like tight. Like tight. Like tight. Yep. Like I need a clockwise turn. Oh, careful, don't go crazy. About all it need, probably. I'm gonna get my miter tight. Tight. Like tight? Like tight. That always drove my dad crazy when us kids would talk and be like, like dad, like, you know, the other day, like, I went out and like, my dad was like, it's not a sorry lark! <laughs> I mean, that's how you talk now. No, I've, I've stopped that a while. A little for a while. I mean, every now and then I'll bust it out, but. Bust it down? All right, now what I need to do, I've Greg? I've decided to take little pauses in between what I'm saying and stop using like as a filler. What I like to do, can I do that though? I yeah, mean, yeah, see. See, that's different. That's, that's different. What I like to do is, yes, like you said, you gotta slow down just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Know what you're gonna say instead of, yeah. okay, that's pretty much dang near money. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a toenail in that guy. What I was thinking of doing like was... <laughs> See, that just sounded stupid. That one was forced in there. Yeah. yeah. What I love about these GRKs too is we used to use the old screws and you would do this, it would mushroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These don't do that. It's like... <laughs> it's perfectly smooth, even though you just put that master screw in there. Yeah. I think that's pretty cool. I think that's... I'm assuming that if I was a finished carpentry guy, which we are. I mean, yeah. I'm building cabinets here. Look at that. That looks good. Yeah, yeah. All right, now here, Greg, what I need to do is I've got... I mean, I like that. How's it look? Uh, it looks good, dude. It looks very good. It, the miter is tight in the back here. I mean, if you like it, I like I it. I love it. I'm gonna go ahead and drive a monster wagon. Again. I'm gonna take it a step further and say I love it and not just like it. Okay, because it looks good. Watch this. I can't believe that. I could drive that to China, Greg. And this is the one that you're gonna wait to. Uh, put up because you're gonna measure it, right? Level everything out and then measure it and then... We need to, yes, we need to level this out and that out. We don't have anything level on the front, this or that. Okay, now go up on that lift. Go, oh, go right on that, go right on that stand. Yeah. And just give me a little pressure off to slide it your way. Just wanna slide it that way a little. Okay, that's good, right there. Nice, dude, thank you. Now for a lot of this structural connections, um, we kind of go away from the three and an eighth GRKs and this is a number 10 four inch. Uh, it's good for treated, it's good for everything. I mean, decking, framing, whatever. It's got a thousand pound pull out per screw. That's really good, Greg. That's what it says. It says a number 10 load. Okay, that's a load. Shear test, thousand pound shear test. So a thousand pounds to go. So see, that's the problem. A lot of people use a screw to frame with, but that's not really what you should do unless it's a structural screw because screws break. Nails like our 20 pennies, they have good shear strength. So they bend a lot before they break so they can hold up to forces. But you already knew that, right? Yep. But I didn't know if you guys knew that, so I took that as an opportunity to to share, I'm always getting asked, why do you guys nail so much? Use screws. Well, these are super expensive. GRKs are the best, but you pay for it. Um, we use the best nail, which is a maze nail, and these are made in the pole barn industry. I mean, these are what has built, you know, I mean, like every pole barn almost, I think, is maze nails. And that's because they are awesome and they're made in the US. I'm told 
the only remaining family owned American nail company. Oh, when you found that out? They told me that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I went to a trade show and I seen them. But anyway, all right, plumb me up, my brother. Plum. See what I did here? So this is my rafter tail. Mm -hmm. We'll run our purlins. This will be a, a rafter. So we'll sheet our plywood down flush. This will get our, our fascia to die in perfect. And then we'll make another fascia off of this corner here, right here and that'll create our valley. Gotcha. I think. It's goal. Okay, I see what you're doing. No, no, plumb out the outside one. Please. Oh, you can plumb them both. Yeah, I need, I, need, I need to go your way anyways. Not much. Yeah, like I said, maybe... Uh, I moved it. I mean, is that where you want it? Uh, it's, yeah. That's where I want it. Yeah. That's perfect. This is literally right on the eight foot mark. <laughs> I, I guess. It'll have to do. I'm just gonna nail it. I'm gonna nail it down so I have like something to kind of stop against. Right over here. Okay. And then I'll set the truss in. Good idea. I got an idea. I got an idea, Greg. Right on the money. Gonna need it soon. You're good though. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, bring the truss in. It should stop right on that corner if I'm... Huh? The truss? It will, because I'll have my forks on it. I need a bottom one. Looks like one, two, three. Small pole, yeah, right there. All right, because we had to install this trim first so that we could run this steel, so that we could screw off the wall with our lift, uh, it meant we weren't able to drive 60 pennies down into the, uh, the top of the purlin, so we use these uh, basically hurricane clips, and it's definitely going to keep it probably even stronger tied down than a standard single 60. So, um, yeah, I think that worked pretty good. Right there, and good, huh? Sorry, what did you do to your for this guy? Nothing. You're just right on the edge, planed in right there, my dude. Okay. Alright. Oh, bunga. Alright. 
Oh, you got a screw or a, a saw? Why would you already cut your 412? I didn't think of that. Zach, can you get us a circular saw, please? I got a 412 already on it, so. Oh, you do? Yeah. You like your, uh, you like your in and out? It pleases me, sir. Ugh. Well, that one didn't do the best. It is? Yeah. No, the front side's good too, man. It's just the very bottom has a little crack in there. Which I should be able to I should be able to take care of. Now obviously this kit loader got a boom, it's gonna push out uh, about four foot, and that's gonna put a ton of weight way out. So how much can it really lift? This is uh, a full bunk of zip sheeting 5 8 minus three sheets. So let's pick it up, Greg. putting up and uh, it's just gonna be a lot safer with the telehandler but thought we'd share with how much capacity that is that's probably I don't know I'll have to look and find out how much weight that is there you go So check it out here. This is one of the things that I'm always kind of looking for, and that is where this truss is planing into this handmade rafter that I just cut. Um, it, it tells me that everything is really good because right here in the middle, where this middle hits the, mi the, the basically the plane of this guy, that is right on this corner right here, and it's hitting right where it should. So what that means is that I'm perfectly planed in so that I'm gonna have a nice valley that's gonna go right up this roof line when it's all said and done. So I've still got a two by four that's gonna go on top of this and a two by four that'll go on top of this. But basically this is telling me that things are going well and uh, you know, that's because math never lies. So now what we gotta do is uh, Basically, I got to run some fascia on this, then I can tie my fascia here, and then that's going to give us our valley point up to way up there where maybe you can see our trim detail came together. You remember that? 
So that's already been defined. We got the other side sheeted, and uh, once this side over here is sheeted, then I can run my purlins over top like we did going into the garage on the other side. You want to set that, Greg, to 18 and a half degrees? Right, this one's going to be the 412. They're both 412. Well, yeah, one's, uh, one's the, uh, yeah. Alright, now, we're going to go do the tallest one, and we'll cut it. So we'll cut it off, and I'll do another one, you know what I'm saying? Got Nails? Nail gun. Nail gun? Well, we're going to nail gun it, yeah. Okay. I got this. You don't need me. Oh, I need you, Greg. No, you don't. I always need you. Don't lie to me, boy. Eight foot four. Hey, I had a strip of nails in my pouch. Bust this out real quick. We got the track soft tail. Let's do this, man. Uh, get an orange line up there. Yep. Yeah. Center it up. Nailer's right here, dude. You like your yours? Where you? Okay. Here, I got my tape. I got my tape here. What do you need? Up or down? Four foot. This will help straighten it out. Up or down? 